Hey, what's up guys, Zach from Wired Customs, and today I'm gonna to show you what it takes to wire up a Ford Flathead. Real quick guys, I wanna make sure you know that Wired Customs is not just a YouTube channel, we sell Flathead Ford speed parts. We have these beautiful coolant pipes, thinned uh, frog uh, scoops, we have intakes for Model A's, this beautiful thinned burns intake. Uh, we have a bunch of different types of scoops. They're all polished aluminum. We got some screens in some. The frog ones actually come with air filters, which is a cool setup. Our velocity stacks come with screens. We have fuel blocks, one to two, cool V8 logo on it. Uh, we have Hutton Sullivan heads coming in later this year. Super excited about that, guys. We have a lot of awesome things coming in later this year. So there's a lot of cool stuff on the website now and even more coming later. We're about to start selling these beautiful spark plug wires. They're cloth covered, uh, but they're set up for Petronics and points. You can run this on anything that you have. It's gonna look great. We're gonna run it uh, black with the blue or black with the red. So watch out for that. They're gonna be cut to length. So you're gonna cut them and crimp them yourself. I have a video showing you how to do all that kind of stuff. And so you can get that really nice spark plug routing. Uh, that's one of my pet peeves is when the routing's all hanging loose like this motor, it's driving me crazy. Uh, but make sure you go on to wiredcustomsllc.com, check out what we got, get a couple cool uh, speed parts. These are not made in China speed part guys. Uh, you'll be buying it from a veteran owned business right here in Waverly, Virginia. So check that out. Now if you follow my channel, you'll notice that I've had this frame and running a drivetrain. I've had multiple bodies on this. I've had a Tudor, a Phaeton, a Roadster, uh, just all over the place. So I've unwired and rewired this motor many times. And a lot of the questions I get is, well, what should I be looking for electrically wrong with my flathead? So being able to understand what the flathead actually needs to run will help you diagnose what's possibly wrong with yours. So the very first thing you need to think about is power to the coil. This should be key switch. There shouldn't be power all the time. This is what's gonna turn the motor on and off, this one little piece right here. Now it depends on how, uh, what kind of setup you have on your flathead, 12 volt, six volt, etc. cetera. Um, I have a 12 volt on mine, so I'm gonna explain what I have. So I have 12 volts going to the ballast resistor here. It's just a little white block. This is gonna reduce the voltage down to six volts. So the power side of my coil is actually gonna have six volts, not 12. If you have a uh, stock setup, you might not have a ballast resistor. Some cars actually have a ballast resistor underneath the dash wired into the wiring harness. So uh, I have points on this still, so that's why it needs six volts. Uh, if I had a Protronics, the coil would just need 12 volts. So that's pretty straightforward. Make sure you have power to the coil. Then the ground, the ground is actually gonna go down to the distributor and go through the condenser at points, et cetera. So make sure you got 12 volts there. Something that's really, really overlooked is the ground from the flathead to the chassis. This is extremely important, and this cannot be done on a small wire. It needs to be a very thick wire. Here's a stock location from this motor. This is a big unshielded ground strap that would have went right to the body. I really recommend going straight to the frame every single time if you're wiring it up yourself. Use a shielded wire, of course. Um, I don't use these uh, old school braided wires anymore, not if I can't help it. I like to go off of the, uh, the bell housing straight to the chassis, a nice thick wire. I use a uh, single aught. The, the biggest, <clears throat> the smallest wire that I would use is maybe one or two gauge, but make sure it's big. Nice and clean connections for the ground. Now, as you can see, obviously I'm a hot rodder and this isn't a stock setup. So I run the Power Master. It's a one wire out the back. And with the power master, you have to make sure that it's grounded through the intake really well. This case grounds to the motor through the intake. Some guys even run a ground wire off of the back of the power master. Also keep in mind, the power master will not charge at idle on a flathead only while driving, when the RPM is up to around 800 to 1000 range when it actually starts charging. But that's simple. You need some way to charge the flathead as it runs. So let's go over a couple distributor options, just in case you're trying to figure this out for yourself on your car, trying to diagnose it. I have a stock distributor cap for now. <laughs> I'm working on that. But the ground side from this coil is gonna go down and actually screw, it, screw in right here where the condenser is also uh, working off of that ground and it goes down inside the distributor. Now to check your points, to make sure your points are functional, 
Uh, this is another electrical test. Unscrew the ground side of the coil. Have it where it's almost touching. And what we're gonna do is, with the something that's insulated, open and close the points manually. I have a snap-on screwdriver that has a big rubber handle on it. It's insulated, I don't get shocked. Open and close the points. You'll see an arc from the ground wire to the coil, to the coil ground. So that's how you check your points. I uh, hope that makes sense in the video. Uh, some guys do a little bit different, but obviously also if you want to check the CPF spark, you can pull a spark plug out. Or what I like to do, I have another brand new spark plug sitting on the shelf. I'll pop that in one of these, uh, I'll pop that in one of these spark plug wires and I'll put it up on the intake so it's grounded, crank the engine over CPF spark. The different color spark determines how much voltage you have going to the spark plug itself. Here's a little chart on your screen so you can pause it and screenshot it or just pause it and study it so you understand what kind of arcs you should be getting out of your spark plug. Now let's say you upgraded to a Protronics unit and you don't have points anymore. I have other videos uh, contemplating which one's better, which one's worse. You can watch those, or I'll put a link in the comments so you can click on that and decide for yourself what's better. But if you have that Stromberg e-fire, which I'm actually a fan of, uh, it's easier to hook up, but uh, almost impossible to diagnose. Now, the how you hook it up is, it's pretty simple. It has a red wire and a black wire. The red wire goes to the positive side of the coil. The black wire goes to the negative side of the coil. The types of spark plugs that you run with that, are very important the type of coil you run with that are very important i go over all that in that other video but just so you know that's how you hook it up and it's almost impossible to diagnose to see what's going on with it uh smoke gas my cap is on that but that's how you diagnose it or so that's how you hook it up if you were going to hook up a stromberg e-fire so when it comes to electronics on a flathead it's extremely simple. That's basically all you need. That's the information that you need to know. Uh, it's up to you to determine if you have a six volt or 12 volt or what type of distributor you have. But the V uh, style distributor that I have, the round type distributor, uh, the crab, if they're all points, they're all wired up the same way. Pertronics is the difference. Uh, and I like both ways. Both ways have merit. Both ways uh, need extra parts on hand in case you break down. So. It's up to you on what you like the most for yourself. Wiring up a flathead, super simple. Make sure uh, the alternator goes straight to the battery. Some guys run straight to the starter solenoid. Uh, when it comes to the starter side of it, let's explain how that's wired up. Battery goes directly to the starter solenoid. I use a single lot wire, which is pretty big. Some guys might use something smaller, but most of the time my batteries are in the trunk, far away from the motor, because I still run the original gas tank, stuff like that but I like to use single lot wire directly to the starter relay. Uh, the gauge of wire is determined by the length and the amps. So for me, on a starter with the battery in the trunk, single lot, double lot, that's kind of the range that I like to work in. One gauge if it's just a little bit shorter, but single lot is kind of my sweet spot. That's what I always end up using. Uh, we should run it right to the starter solenoid. On an early Ford, that, that starter relay is pretty simple. So we have the battery side, then we have the starter side, then we have a ground. Depending on what type of starter solenoid you have, uh, you might have two terminals. One terminal is just gonna wire back to the battery side, so it's ignition on all the time, but it's not gonna do anything unless it's grounded from that second terminal that goes up to the dash and grounds in the dash. This thing is a relay in itself. You don't need any relays to control it. Some of them don't have that jumper wire. Some of them just have one terminal just for the ground on the dash. So just depends on which one that you have in your car. Make note of that and that's how it should be wired up. Ground side on the dash, all it's gonna do is flip that relay and it's gonna crank the starter. What I always try to strive on my channel is give you all the information, let you make the choices for yourself. I hope I've done that for you guys today. Wiring up a flathead, super simple, super easy guys. If you have a crank no start, you kind of know what to look for now or if you have a no crank, no start, you know what to look for now as well. Starter relays are very cheap. I get mine from vintageautogarage.com. Check them out, I'll put a link for, uh, for them in the description of this video. They have that starter relay for 12 volt with that jumper wire already included. All you have to do is hook up uh, battery side, starter side, then the ground to your dash so you can use the push button start on the dash on a 12 volt system. That's how I like to do it. Super cool, super traditional. Um, I don't like using ignition keys. Uh, as much as the next guy so 
Thank you guys for watching my channel. And remember, get out in the garage and get your shift together.